Hey guys, this is Helena from Glass Factory. I'm here with Morgan St. John uh, to talk about our new single. Hi. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Doing well, doing well. It's the end of the week. It's been a crazy week, but a good one. Yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> um, <laughs> can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so my name is Morgan St. Jean, um, which is actually my real name. People are always convinced it's a, it's a stage name, but it's actually my real name. Um, I'm born and raised <clears throat> in Los Angeles, which is great. It's a great city, but I definitely think it's shaped me because it's kind of an, a unique place to grow up. So I'm from here and I'm a musician. I'm an artist and a songwriter and a singer. And yeah. Cool. That's awesome. Where you, so you said you're located in Los Angeles. What's your favorite part about being in Los Angeles? Um, I'm definitely like a city girl. So I just like that there's always something to do and you can always find a new place that you haven't been before. Um, I also love New York City. I call New York City my soulmate city. Mm -hmm. So um, I try to spend as much time as there as I can there as well. Um, but I just love being in places where there's stuff happening and people are there for a reason. You know, I don't think you can come to L.A., and not have a reason to be here. So I just love that yeah. the people here are so motivated and inspired and I love that. Yeah, I've totally yeah. gotten vibes, from those vibes from it. So yeah. Really cool. Yeah. Um, How has that changed, do you think, in the pandemic? Do you think it's coming back? I definitely feel like things are starting to come back. I've actually said to my friends, I'm a little overwhelmed with like how much there is to do now because I got <laughs> kind of used to, you know, like being in my little bubble and and not really having plans but um i'm excited you know i honestly missed like going dancing with my girlfriends and i missed the spontaneity of real life you know you could just decide like oh i'm gonna go meet up with my friends here or i'm gonna go have dinner here right. and i'm excited that that's starting to kind of come back again also i'm excited that live music is coming back right oh Ugh, that was so crazy how long that's been on pause it still feels too good to be true, honestly. No. <laughs> like I it's still, crazy. especially in California. I mean, you understand mm -hmm. all of that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. We need to go there, but yeah. I, I finally got to see some of my friends play a concert in person, like a couple weeks ago, and I was like, oh my. I was a little freaked out to be around people. You know what I mean? But it was <laughs> so fun and just such a. It felt like a weight lifted off my shoulders. You mm -hmm. know. Yes, I know exactly what you mean. I went to my first real show in over a year in like last Friday. Yeah, so last oh. week. So and I'm just so happy for all the venues and like all the people who work behind the scenes of shows who, yeah. you know, because as a musician, obviously not being able to play shows and not being able to tour is a big hit. But there are still other ways to be creative and do your job. Whereas for a lot of people, live is their only job and that's their only source of income so i'm just really happy for those people that they can start coming back again yeah have you seen any familiar faces at your favorite venues or anything like that yet um not yet like i said i got to see my friends loud luxury play a show which was really really fun mm -hmm. um and they're so great live so that was fun and i got to go up on stage because i have a song with them but other than that i haven't really seen i'm trying to think if i've seen anybody else live yet not yet okay cool. gotta start buying some tickets yeah, start buying some tickets and <laughs> all that. Um, yeah. This is is fall going to be busy for you as well as far as that goes? I think so. I hope so. Um, you know, I've been really focused on throughout the pandemic and I'm continuing to. I've been really focused on sort of the social media digital mm -hmm. world and I've been pretty active on TikTok, which has mm -hmm altered the way that I've released music in a way that I really enjoy. I'm basically just putting out a ton of music, songs that, you know, I'll write one day and then they'll be out two weeks later because TikTok blows them up or whatever. Yeah. And so my focus has really been in the sort of digital space, but I'm eager to get back to a live, like real face to face. Yeah, you know, I bet. Um, vibe. <laughs> speaking on TikTok, uh, I, yeah, you, you started on TikTok. How did that... Like what, what made you come up with that idea? Just the pandemic or? Yeah, you know, well, I was on TikTok before that, which I sort of forget mm -hmm. because it's actually funny. I used to nanny for this family and they had two girls who I love so much um, and they're like 10 and 12, which is the exact age of the TikTok audience. You right. know what I mean? And they would always talk about TikTok. I remember so vividly one time I was at their house and I said something about Gigi Hadid and they were like, who's that? Like, what? what? But Charlie D'Amelio and Addison Ray are like their idols. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, clearly this platform is like having a big impact on the young, you know, 
kids right. who are the people who decide culture. You know, they decide what's cool. So I was like, this is seemingly very important. So I slowly started to get on it, but I didn't really figure it out. And then when the pandemic hit, it was sort of like just the thing to do. You know what I mean? So I started um, posting videos there and stuff, but I really didn't find my footing on there until the last couple of months. And it's been really interesting figuring out how TikTok affects my art and my sound, because I was saying actually yesterday, I think my TikTok community and the people who follow me really hold me accountable because the songs that they love are my most honest and my most raw, authentic songs. So it's sort of forcing me to really make sure that everything I write is coming from a really real place, you know, and I love I love like pop bops and just songs that you can dance to for sure. But even those songs, I feel like now I'm writing them from such an authentic place because that's what people want. Yeah, that's really interesting. And that's a really interesting perspective uh, on all that, uh, especially with the TikTok audience taking, holding you accountable and then mm -hmm. liking your more vulnerable, vulnerable stuff. Like that's not usually what you would expect, especially with like dancier music. Exactly. And I think I st started to get back to a place because of TikTok where I just sit at a piano and write by myself. And that's such a mm -hmm. good feeling thing for me to do. Like I feel so fulfilled when I sit at a piano by myself and just sing and and write mm -hmm. and it's easy. Um, and again, I, I still do love writing like bops and I still do love writing those songs that you can scream in your car that are more like fun and lighthearted. But I feel mm -hmm. like TikTok has sort of encouraged me to combine both of those styles, you know, the more like authentic, intimate piano vocal songs with the more like boppy pop songs. Yeah, it's a really interesting contrast. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely noticed that in your music. It's very cool, in it, but it's also super vulnerable, too. So, yeah, really cool. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, who would you say your biggest uh, muse is in your, cra in, in your craft? I think my biggest muse... Okay, this is going to be a weird answer, but it's honestly just the truth, is my own life right now. Mm -hmm. Because... I've been through those phases where I was writing about somebody else or I was writing about some guy who broke my heart or I was writing about, you know, some guy that I was in love with who didn't give a shit about me. Sorry, I don't know if I can curse. Um, okay. <laughs> but lately I've really been writing songs from a place of just like self-love mm -hmm. and feeling like very whole in my own life. And so whether I'm writing a song for a friend because I'm watching what they're going through, or even if I am writing a song about a relationship or a guy, it's coming from a place of like, I'm pretty confident in who I am right now. And I'm pretty happy with where I'm at in life and embracing that, That's you know, so I don't want to sound like a, like a cocky, you know, whatever, but I just feel like my own life right now, I'm really in a place where I'm inspired by it and I'm feeling really good about who I am and what I'm doing. And so even the moments where I'm feeling uncertain i'll write about those moments from a place of acceptance yeah definitely there's there's a huge difference between cockiness and confidence and mm -hmm. i don't know as a woman i think you understand like you get mistaken for cocky just when you're confident and it's so annoying it's so annoying it's so. the worst but and you know what and i feel like that's a sentence that if a guy had said it he would never have prefaced it by saying like i don't want to sound cocky you know right. But Nobody I think does women, that. No. exactly. And yeah. we're, we're so conditioned to be apologetic for our confidence mm -hmm. that we don't come off as like overly cocky or anything. So I appreciate you for pointing that out because yeah. you're so right. Like there's no reason to be, yeah, like my life is my muse right now. That's what I'm inspired by. And I think that's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's totally okay. Yeah. I just want to let you know that you don't have to apologize for that. Because well, thank you. Like, <laughs> it's a, a good reminder. <laughs> like, can't we can't we all just be inspired by our own lives at some point like there could be good things that are happening and we're just inspired by that and that's okay that doesn't make I feel happy. like it's so true and as women even we're like conditioned to make our successes smaller and like not yeah. celebrate things and I've caught myself in the last year doing that as well you know when a good thing happens I downplay it to other people so that I don't come off as like too much yeah and I feel like that's something we definitely need to uh stop doing so yeah you're right. <laughs> yep, it's something I've been working on for sure. A hundred percent. And I've also been working on not saying sorry all the time. Like, yeah. I don't know if you've heard this, but I think there's something that says women apologize like seven times more often than men. Mm -hmm. And there's something, I read something that said, instead of saying, hey, I'm so sorry I was late or whatever, you can say, hey, thanks for waiting for me. 
you know? And I was like, oh, I love that because that's also then giving the other person credit for being patient without saying I'm wrong or I'm bad for running late. Yeah, I've heard you know? that before, but yeah, that was that's a really good reminder because that's just a whole change in the mindset. It's like totally. it's rewiring not just your own brain to not be sorry and self-conscious, but for like to be more confident and then for yeah. people to be noticing that com- that confidence in like a way that flatters them, which is really weird and cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's honestly too when I think about my music and Sometimes it's funny because I look at my songs and I'm like, they they feel all over the place in a way, in the sense that, you know, I'll have a song like Not All Men, which is about sexual assault and is really vulnerable and kind of sad and heartbreaking. And then I'll have a song like Red Flag, which is, you know, me being like a bad bitch. Mm -hmm. And I think about, you know, how do those songs fit together? And the truth is the way that they fit together in my mind is that everything I write is meant to encourage women in particular and anybody but specifically women to feel confident and to be unapologetic and that means to me you know not apologizing when you are having a negative emotion or not apologizing when you're feeling insecure like like i said you know i want to i want to write songs that even when i do feel a little uncertain or unsure or insecure i'm owning that and accepting that instead of apologizing for it you know yeah that makes sense my next question for you is uh about your uh latest release red flag um could you tell us a little bit about the writing process behind it we did talk about confidence but yes maybe just like the more technical side of it and how it yeah of course yeah so i actually wrote that song quite a while ago like at least a few months ago and i get really inspired by random things whether it's you know something i see when i'm walking down the street or an instagram caption or i it could be anything and there was a quote that i had heard that was like, and I don't even fully know where it comes from or anything like that, but it it was like, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. And I always understood that quote to mean, believe people when they show you who you are or who they are, sorry, believe people when they show you who they are. Because, you know, my mom always says, when someone shows you their true colors, believe them the first time. And I was noticing myself and my friends who I think are like, my girlfriends are the most amazing people in the world to me. And we would settle for these guys that were just walking red flags and pretend like they weren't because they were cute or whatever, you know? And I was like, why are these amazing women settling for less than what they deserve? And why are we making excuses for bad behavior for no reason, you know? And so I wanted to write a song that was sort of a combination of that quote and also about fuckboys and just being like, stop falling for them because they're showing you exactly who they are. Yeah, they're you know? so obvious. <laughs> yeah. And so, and I thought, I just thought it was like a cheeky, funny little concept. And so I brought it into a session with a couple of my friends and we wrote the chorus pretty quickly. And we had some other verses, which I ended up rewriting on my own, which is sort of what I always do because I feel like when I'm writing by myself, I can get a little bit more in my own space than what I want to say. And then Dixie D'Amelio put out a song called Fuck Boy. And so I was like, oh no, because originally mine was called Fuck Boy. And I was like, oh no, like I can't put it out now. I really liked this one. And then I was like, wait a minute, maybe I should put it on TikTok and see what people think. So I did. And I said, you know, Dixie just put out this song. Is it bad if I put out my own song with the same name or do we think that's okay? And my TikTok community was like, no, we love this song. Definitely put it out, just change the name. Oh, cool. So that's where the idea came from was just people in my comments being like, what if you called it red flag? That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So it like worked that. out quite well. And I'm, I'm happy with how it turned out because that's really what the song is about. It's just like listing red flags being like, Hey, just so you know, these are red flags. Don't ignore them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially for younger audiences too. They're like, they might not know quite yet what's going that's very on. True. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, and that can save us all. Sometimes we have to learn from experience, but if I can help somebody avoid that experience, I'm definitely glad to do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not something that any, I don't know, and, and nobody no. should deal with. And more, more boys should be held accountable for being That was the other thing that I was like low key hoping was like maybe some dude will hear this in his car and be like, shit, like I do that, you know? <laughs> And maybe like hold himself accountable a little bit. That might be an aggressive yeah. hope, but yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just one. We just we can change one, one fuck boy. We've done our job in this world. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> so uh how is this single single gonna influence your music in the future do you think that's a good question i think i'm i'm writing a lot right now and i'm i feel pretty confident in who i am as an artist but at the same time i feel like i'm always really exploring and i think this is just another way for me to explore a different side of myself you know i love like i said i love to just write at the piano by myself and write ballads but then also i have dance songs and i like exploring all different facets of my musicality and then seeing what connects with other people because that's why i do this you know i love to connect with other people and so if something really resonates with my audience then that's something i'm going to continue to run with yeah so i think it's just it's allowing me to continue to explore and figure out exactly what kind of music I want to make. And um, hopefully I can continue to make all different kinds of music, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. Um, I mean, I'm not saying don't keep doing what you're doing because I think what you got is really awesome, but it'd be really cool to hear what else you have um, to offer. Yeah, I mean, I think that's part of being an artist, right? Is like just always evolving and growing and seeing what the next, I don't think anything should ever sound like the last thing you did. Right. And I, that's really counterintuitive to the music industry because once you hit that one single, everything's got to sound the same from then on. You know? Yeah. They want you to chase that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, I think people are starting to break from that or like realize that they don't want to do that. Um, at least people that I know that I've been following for a while, they've been sw either switching genres completely or they're leaving their labels or so on. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't encourage leaving labels necessarily. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I think for me, you know, the through line, even if all the songs are sort of different, like I said, is A, my voice, like my actual singing voice is always going to keep those songs consistent. But B, the place from which I'm writing the songs is like this confident self-love place. Right. And so even if they're all kind of different, I do think there are, are things that make them me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah I that's the goal. You have a distinct enough voice, though. I think that you could do that really easily. I don't mm -hmm. think a lot of people could get away with that, but I think you definitely could because you have that recognizable voice for sure. So yeah. I think I think it could blend with multiple genres. It'd be really cool to hear what you come. A lot with. of my heroes have been able to make it work, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah, that would. Yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing it. <laughs> Um, when people listen to your music, what messages do you have in, like in general that you want to reach out to? I know we talked a little bit about like making an impact or have, making yeah. something, but is there any other, anything else you want to comment on that? I mean, I hope that people just listen to my music and feel like the best version of themselves. Mm. You know, I just, I believe so strongly that I always say like, I consider myself a bad bitch. I think I make bad bitch pop. And that doesn't necessarily always mean being happy right. or always being confident. Yeah. Even the most confident people feel insecure sometimes. And I think being unapologetic for those feelings too is equally as important as being confident and being happy. And I think particularly as women, we're taught to minimize our feelings and shut our feelings down so that we're not too much or we're not dramatic or we're not crazy. Right. And I just want to encourage people to like be whoever they are to the fullest extent. Mm -hmm. Like if you're fucking crazy, be crazy. Who, you know what I mean? Like who is to decide who's crazy? Yeah. And if you're feeling sad, be sad. Let yourself own that and don't apologize for it. You know? And don't hold it in. A hundred. I feel like that's the worst thing, right? Yeah. That's like the worst thing you did, that you could do. And that's like still so encouraged to just like not feel what you're feeling. So a hundred percent. And I think for me, it comes from a place of, I literally have the word feel tattooed on my body mm. because I used to feel, I, I have such intense feelings and emotions and I used to feel so guilty for that. And like, mm. I would be called crazy or I would be called overly emotional or irrational. And I was really, I just had so much guilt and shame about all of my emotions. And the older I got and the more I started writing songs and, and you know, thinking about it, the more I realized my feelings are literally my superpower. That's what allows me to write songs. That's what allows me to connect with other people. I'm never going to apologize for that again. Mm -hmm. You know, I just want to own whatever I'm feeling and be honest about that and not apologize for it. Yeah. Yeah. Those are so hopefully funny. that's what other people feel when they listen yeah. to my stuff too. I definitely got some of those feelings. So. Good. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. <laughs> um, congratulations on your new single. Um, do you have any final thoughts before we head out? 
Um, well, thank you for having me. This was such a fun chat. Yeah, and uh, for anybody who doesn't know me, I'm on all social media. Just search Morgan St. Jean. And yeah, I hope people like the music.